Good morning. We acknowledge the traditional territory upon which our church is built. For many thousands of years, the Jumano, Tonkawa, and Coahuiltecan peoples sought to walk gently on this land. They offered assistance to the first European travelers to this territory and shared their knowledge for survival in what was, at times, a harsh climate. We seek a new relationship with the original peoples of this land, one based in honor and deep respect. Creator and Redeemer, as we approach you in prayer, make us walk in beauty and balance. Make us open our hearts and minds and make us speak the truth as we pray for all our relatives in the circle of life throughout all creation. Good morning. Welcome. What a beautiful day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. So rejoice and be glad in it. What a privilege to be with you on this beautiful morning, celebrating this planet, celebrating this community, and celebrating the Soul Center. So many wonderful faces and friends here. It is truly a blessing to be with you this morning. I do have a few announcements, and then at a different place, I'll unpack a few more announcements uh, and instructions, because you know I love instructions. Um, this is Earth Day, and I'm so committed to Earth Day that I'm wearing Earth on my jeans, if you can see. <laughs> Thanks to Juju B, who is my special little friend. Um, and so a few notes. If you do not have one, please track down a song sheet. It's this uh, small half page size sheet. It has the, divine, the response that we will say once Joseph comes up for the call to worship. It also has the hymn verses and um, the New Zealand Lord's Prayer. So this will be really... Oh, you can also, if you have the QR code or, or, the or the website, you can download the song sheet on your phone. A note about bathrooms, please, as you can see, it's kind of congested here, not to use these bathrooms, but the side doors to the community room are open for those who don't normally, don't know the campus of UPC. You'd go down that walkway to the end, there should be an unlocked door at the very end on your right. Also, the CE building, and then I think the admin is also open, so there's multiple opportunities. Let's take a breath. Let's take a moment to hear the bird song. Let's take a moment, even with cars passing by, to recognize that all of this is creation, that all of this, if we have eyes open to see, can speak to us of the divine. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Good morning. Good morning. All right, for those of you who don't have a song sheet, we're going to be speaking responsively. I suppose I'll do the, the traditional hand raise for you or something. Uh, your words will be, divine love endures forever. Let's practice that one time. All right, on three. One, two, three. Divine, Divine love, love endures forever. forever. Wonderful. Give thanks to the Holy One, for goodness abounds. Divine, Divine love endures forever. Let the winds and the waters say, Divine love endures forever. Let the woodlands and wildflowers say, Divine love endures forever. Let all that lives and longs for justice, peace, and beauty say, Divine love endures forever. This is the day. This is the moment that the Lord has made. May we rejoice and be glad in it. Amen.
Please be seated. Um, I forgot to say, I'm Dawn Martin. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. It's uh, wonderful to be with you. Now we're going to enter into a time first. Um, I want to see if you don't have a rock, would you raise your hand? And we have some wonderful assistants who are going to hand out a rock. And while we are doing that, um, some of you may have noticed, some of you may not have read, our guests may not have read my in touch note, but I quoted, I'm having some fringe hair today, it's really exciting. Um, I quoted uh, from Pope Francis's encyclical Laudato Si, meaning peace be to you. If you have not read it, please read it. It's one of the most important theological texts written in this century, I would say. Anyway, in Laudato, Pope Francis draws from his namesake's wisdom, St. Francis of Assisi, and the saint's beautiful Canticle of the Creatures, also known as Canticle of the Sun. It's a beautiful hymn um, praising God and all of creation. And I want to wait until Erica, <laughs> Erica's going to be all over the place. Um, the Canticle invites us into a space of connection, wherein we seek to see beyond the veils, be they woven of theology, religion, politics, ideology. This hymn invites us to see beyond the veils that too readily divide us from one another and from our fellow earth dwellers. And while these various veils might seek to obscure, St. Francis opens a field of, percep of perception bursting in awe and wonder. And I'm going to read to you a few verses from the canticle as reimagined by Catherine Patterson with um, some edits. But as, we're, um, as I'm reading this, I invite you, if you have your rock, just to sort of um, be tactfully mindful. You know, feel the edges, feel the weight. Just sort of be with the rock. And as I read these um, verses to you, I invite you just to, you might want to close your eyes, you might want to do some deep breath, but just be aware not only of the sights and sounds, but of this tactile embodied element with the rock. And Erica is far away. She does have the book from which I'm reading. Um, oh, Hannah's going to have it. So if you want to, if we have any little ones who might want to see some of the pages to the book, if Hannah, um, amazingly, this is what you call adapting on the spot. <laughs> you can go wherever. All right, Hannah's fabulous. So here are some of the verses. We come to sing a song of praise to you, O God, who by your power and out of your love created all things good. We praise you for our brother son, who in his radiant dawning every day reminds us that it was you who brought forth light. We praise you for Sister Moon and all our sister stars who clothe the night with their beauty and, like you, watch over us while we sleep. We praise you for our sibling wind and every kind of weather, stormy or mild, for when they roar, they remind us of your might, and when they come as a cooling breeze, they tell us of your gentleness. We praise you for Sister Water, who fills the seas and rushes down like rivers, who wells up from the earth and falls down from heaven, that all living things may grow. We praise you for our sibling fire, in whose resplendent dancing we catch glimpses of your playfulness. And we praise you for our Sister Earth who declares your mother love for us as she sustains our bodies with food and our souls with beauty. Amen. In the spirit of St. Francis's Canticle, I encourage us to look anew at this place and at each of us gathered here. I invite us to be present in this moment of togetherness, to be mindful of our connectedness to Brother Rock and Sister Wind to our siblings, the birds, as we hear from one another, another ancient canticle, that of Genesis 1. So for the next part of our worship, we're going to enter into the rhythmic cadences of Genesis 1. There will be moments of silence for reflection and then sung response. So the pattern is gonna follow thusly. There will be a scripture reading and then a moment of silence. 
then a scripture reading, and then a sung response from Morning Has Broken. We're only going to sing one verse at a time. We should have printed out these instructions, Anastasia. <laughs> it doesn't matter if we get it perfect because we're going to live into our finitude as a gift from God. So there will be scripture, silence, scripture, song. Scripture, silence, scripture, song. This will happen three moments, three times, and then we'll move into a prayer of transformation and new life. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to enter into the word. Our first scripture is Genesis 1, 1 through 5. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was complete chaos, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. Genesis 1, 14 through 19. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. Genesis 1, 20 through 25. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind 
with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of, of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. From Genesis 1, 26 through 2, 3. Then God said, let us make humans in our image, according to our likeness, and let them care for the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and the cattle and all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything they had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished in their, all their multitude. On the sixth day, God finished the work that God had done, and God rested on the seventh day from all the work that they had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that God had done in creation. Join me in prayer. Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, remind us that we are of the earth. Remind us that what becomes of this swirling marvel becomes of us. As the planet flourishes, so does all existence. As the earth cries out beneath destruction and toxicity, so do all her offspring. Forgive our policies and economies of extraction that have trespassed against the glories of planetary life. Draw to our minds again and again that all creation expresses your love and goodness. Have mercy 
when we forget in whose image we are created, when we forget how we are called to walk upon this land and with one another. We'll take a moment of silent prayer. I love the wind that we're getting on the speakers here. People of God, know this. Love is stronger than death. Hope makes a way out of no way. Grace declares all things restored and awash in divine compassion. In and through grace, we are called to seek justice, to love kindness, and to walk in solidarity with God and with one another. This is the good news of resurrection. Amen. Sandy is going to be joining us to give us a word, a moment of mission for Earth Care Congregation. This is our third year? Fourth year. Excellent. All in great part to Sandy and to our Earth Care Congregation team. I'm Sandy Nicholson, and I'm the chair of the Earth Care Task Force, which was a, a task force that was put together about four and a half years ago um, to kind of look at our congregation and figure out um, under the, the uh, program of hunger at the uh, PCUSA, they started this program called Earth Care, and it was really to help uh, congregations to work together to be better stewards of the earth. And so that meant that they were looking at not only the facilities, which you often think about with, with being better ab about taking care of the earth, but also our worship and also the Christian education that we offer and the outreach in the community to figure out how we as a community of faith could work together to encourage one another to be better stewards of the earth and to encourage um, the community through, through actions that we might take um, in our church um, to help spread the message that we can be better stewards of the earth. So this is the fourth year that we received the certification from PCUSA um, to say that we are an earth care uh, congregation. And um, so today we are celebrating Earth Day a little bit late. Most people celebrated Earth Day on the 22nd of April, but we're celebrating on the 30th, and I think we couldn't have had a better day for it. So uh, we're so happy to be together to celebrate Earth Day today. And uh, part of what we're going to do after the service today is have some activities where we can make um, some crowns out of uh, newspaper, and uh, we're going to have cascaronis that are filled with wild seeds, and we're going to learn about the solar program that uh, Trinity University put together originally. Um, we're going to learn about walking the trails uh, around San Antonio. 
you're going to have a chance to wander on a labyrinth that we're going to put out here in front. We're going to, of course, have food because we can't be together as a community and not have some food. Um, we're also going to do some planting. So if any of those appeal to you, and of course, we're going to have music uh, from Tom Williams uh, to go along with that. And if I've forgotten, oh, we're going to have prayer flags as the other activity and also a photo booth which is going to be a unique photo booth because it's going to be in our oak tree over here. Um, so there's lots of different things for people of all ages and abilities to enjoy. So I hope you all will partake after the service in that. Also, um, in the future, as we continue to sustain the earth and earth care, um, we would like to encourage anybody who has ideas to participate. And we can. the, the thing about uh, being a task force is we only meet when we have something to do. So you don't have to meet on a regular basis. You only have to meet when you're going to plan something to do. So um, I'm always open to more ideas and um, look forward to participating with everybody after this today, but also into the future that way. Thanks. Thank you, Sandy. And thank you, University Presbyterian Church. I think we just need a round of applause because we have made this possible through our commitments uh, to the earth and to all of our communities. Beloved, it is a practice in the Christian tradition, because we do have some friends of ours who are visiting, it is a practice in the Christian tradition to pass the peace of God's love with one another. And so I invite us into a time of sharing that peace and fellowship with one another. The peace of Christ and the peace of God be with you. Amen. <laughs> Great. My favorite show, Choir members, if you'll start making your way down here, we're going to sing our anthem to everyone.
Let us pause and listen to the birds as the choir makes their way back to their seats. Feel the breeze blowing. And just give thanks. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Creator God, not just the birds, but all your universe, 
sing to your glory. Deepen our gratitude for all you have made and for giving us the privilege of caring for it. Awaken in us a renewed commitment to care for the earth and each other. Loving God, help us to turn our lives around to be people of restoration. Help us to build just relationships among human beings and with all of creation. Help us to live sustainably, rejecting consumerism and the exploitation of your creation. And we pray especially for decision makers that their choices might create a more beautiful, whole, resilient world. O oh God of justice, give us courage and persistence to work for justice for those who are most affected by environmental degradation and climate change, to work for the poor who are already suffering and will continue to suffer water and food shortages and who will be displaced by climate change. Creator God, give us your spirit to work together to restore your creation and to hand on a safe environment and climate to our children and theirs. Let our care for creation be our act of worship and obedience to you. Amen. And now let us continue our prayer. I invite you to join in the um, New Zealand Lord's Prayer. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God in whom is heaven, the howling of your name echo through the earth. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In the times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us, for you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. Beloved, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us rejoice in the giving of ourselves, our talents, our hopes, our dreams, and our resources. We now enter into a time of offering.
Will you join me in prayer? Beloved, we give that we might partake in the wonder that is God. Holy One, we ask that you bless these gifts. May they multiply in ways that are life-giving, spirit-renewing, and community-building. And let God's people say, Amen. Amen. Now, if you're able, um, we can rise for our hymn number 69, I, the Lord of, ski, see, of Skiing and Recreational Activities. <laughs> I, the Lord of Sea and Sky. <laughs> seated. We want to take a moment to recognize with great gratitude the time that Dawn Martin has spent among the congregation here. When she told us she was leaving, the first thing I thought was, no, not so soon, not now. And then she said her last Sunday would be Earth Sunday, Earth Day celebration, Earth Day fiesta. And what a, a perfect combination that is, because she has been an important part of um, making this a congregation grow in its awareness of being a congr uh, an earth care congregation. And so we have a few people who would like to speak to Dawn and um, offer not just words, but other things on behalf of the congregation. First. Um, Anastasia will speak. I think you're going to have to come up here. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> First and foremost, um, most of y'all know we have a cross in the sanctuary that was put together on the first day of worship, a construction site, two pieces of two by four nailed together, its ragged edges um, are still a very meaningful part of our congregation. And as people depart our congregation for whatever reason, we like to give them a, a, a remembrance of the cross um, we used to give out wooden crosses, and now we give out these beautiful clay ornamental crosses that you can either hang on your Christmas tree, hang on the wall, or on a thing. So 
Unfortunately, I have to present one to Dawn as you depart and move on to bigger and better Never better. Things. Never better. <laughs> <laughs> so this is for you with love and gratitude, and we hope that you continue on a wonderful journey. Thank you. Um, Secondly, the leadership of this congregation felt that we needed to recognize Dawn in an additional manner. And so the session, um, as I think you read maybe in last week's In Touch, did um, create the Dawn Martin Earth Care Fund uh, to where contributions can be made in Dawn's honor to continue the work that we have been doing for the past four years as an earth care congregation. And we thought that this was a wonderful way to help represent you and your, I guess, uh, fine standing granola-ing way of living. I joke about that all the time. So um, the other option that we decided to do was to honor you with something living and something tangible here at uh, the grounds of UPC and the Soul Center. So I don't know if you noticed, but there's a crepe myrtle tree right outside the office building. Right now it's decorated with fiesta uh, ribbons and thing but that is your tree. And now we will plant it in the fall because that's the best place to plant uh, things and we'll find out exactly where we wanna plant it on the grounds. But um, this way all of us can always remember whenever we see it and we see the beautiful flowers, we'll be remembering you. Love you. Next, Melinda Loudon will speak, uh, sharing some words from a couple of the directors of Soul Center, and then speaking uh, from the con congregation perspective as well. Melinda. Good morning. Um, I am honored to serve as the session li liaison, liaison. liaison <laughs> as Dawn always beautifully pronounces it, um, for UPC on the Soul Center Community Advisory Board. Um, joining us here today is my fellow advisory board member, Gail Kipp. Thank you, Gail. Um, and we have other um, current and um, past board members um, in the audience, Marcia, Jennifer, um, and so many, many more um, that are here in spirit. Yeah, absolutely. It is such a privilege to know Dawn's work as both UPC Parish Associate and Soul Center Director. For those less familiar with the Soul Center, um, Soul is actually an acronym standing for Source of Light and was so named over 20 years ago because it is an interfaith education center offering enlightening classes on life and faith all in the spirit of respectful curiosity. Soul Center participants have been able to enjoy exploring the worlds of religion, social justice, peace building, sacred texts, ecology, and more. If you have benefited from a, a Soul Center program or experience through the years, please raise your hand and wave. Look at that. Look at that. To help illustrate Dawn's impact as Soul Center director, I would like to share some brief thoughts and blessings from Dr. Deepti Karod current advisory member, and Wahida Kara, a pre previous president of the advisory board. From Deep Tea. Dawn, you carry a beautiful energy wherever you go. You bring knowledge about so many perspectives and people, experiences and skills that are valuable for leading and making amazing programs happen, and a beautiful wisdom. But the most important thing about you, in my opinion, is that when you're talking with someone, you listen with your entire self to their words and their silences. No wonder you are such a bridge builder. And then from Wahida, when Dawn became Soul Center Director, we could easily see her wisdom, knowledge, and most importantly, passion for the community we served. I know Dawn came to Seoul and UPC for a purpose and she delivered beautifully. She will always be remembered for the trailblazing trailblazing work she did with us to reshape the Soul Center. 
I wish her unsurpassed success in all that she does and look forward to hearing about her on CNN. <laughs> we all do, Don. As parish associate at UPC, Don has given our congregation the gift of warmth, kindness, love, and tender care. Her presence has been a comfort in significant events in the life of the church and at smaller times when we didn't know we needed it. Her thoughtful, scholarly approach to preaching and prayer has challenged us, enlightened us, and made us think. Dawn brings an air of the sacred into all that she does. And like you demonstrated earlier, she has taught us all how to take a deep breath <laughs> as a congregation. Both the Soul Center and UPC have thrived under Dawn's leadership because she has a, such a special way of blending the scholarly and the sacred with a mix of wisdom and grace, strength and empathy, action and reflection. It is not a stretch to say that both the Soul Center and UPC communities think of Dawn herself as a source of light. The impact she has made will continue to burn brightly within all of us. And we will take that light out into the world and carry on what she has taught us about peace building, social justice, being a good colleague and friend, and caring for Mother Earth. Thank you, Dawn, for who you are and for all you have done for us. We are so grateful for you, and we are so proud of you. And Melissa Richard, Clerk of the Session, will uh, speak now. Good morning. As I reflect on your time with us, Dawn, and a memory which is a short-term memory for me, it was on Ash Wednesday. And as we came up, we were invited as we came up to have ashes put on our foreheads uh, if we needed a prayer, and I did. I asked you for a prayer. We, we knew there were gonna be big transitions, uh, but we didn't know how many transitions. And your prayer for me that night was just phenomenal. It, it wasn't just a short prayer. It was very thoughtful and meaningful, and I think it's what's carried me through a lot of these days, so thank you. And on behalf of the congregation, uh, please accept this gift from a grateful and loving congregation. You can open it. Oh, I was told to open it. Um, so it's awesome. It has a taco on the front, the card, and it says, just in case so, you didn't know, you're amazing. And you deserve everything awesome coming your way. Thank you so much. Um, should I read the content? Or? Or, or just it's up to you. Uh, oh, sorry. It took me a while to see. Um, as another amazing expression of this congregation's care for me, they are um, gifting me my work computer as a token of appreciation. So thank you to all of you. Whereas I've used my MacBook, I will think of you always. Thank you. Not glamorous. Not glamorous. It's fabulous. Uh, you know I love words, and um, but my words are failing me right now because each and every one of you and this whole community is such a constellation of meaning for me that it would take me a universe of time to express how I feel for you and the way that you have ministered to me on so many levels. Uh, please know that I will carry you in my heart and use this community as an inspiration in all that I do. Thank you. I'd like to send Dawn off with a prayer, and so I invite you to extend your hand of God's blessing, symbolizing God's blessing as we pray. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for your beloved daughter and our sibling, for the years that we have journeyed together, for her peace that calls out to the chaos within us and offers us a deep breath and a way to find calm for her way with words that paints beautiful pictures and challenges us to think more intentionally about who you are 
in who you call us to be. For her loving spirit through which we experience your healing power and her offering it continually as we find sometimes the hurts run so deep that they don't heal easily. We thank you for her infectious laughter that can be heard through walls and doors and infect us with a desire to laugh as well. For the way she uses her laugh and her words and her presence to break down barriers and build up unity across all sorts of division. Thank you for allowing her to journey with this congregation for leaving her DNA on us as individuals, as well as a community of faith and a community of many faiths. As our paths part ways, may we be aware of her imprinting your love on our hearts, and may she be aware of the way we have sought to imprint your love on hers. Hold us close to one another keeping us all in the palm of your hand, even though we may not be physically seeing each other on a regular basis. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's hard to like be a part of, <laughs> to move on from that. Um, I invite you um, to look at your rock. You've had a chance to love on your rock for <laughs> a few minutes now. And um, just as Carla said about putting our DNA, and as the canticle of all creatures reminds us, we are interwoven into the fabric of this universe and of this place. And I invite you, if you are so inclined, now that some of your DNA is on your rock, and these rocks have been here a while, so this, this place's DNA is on the rock. If you would like, you can leave your rock as we, once we disperse uh, in one of our rock areas. Anastasia made some fabulous signs that say rocks. <laughs> They're green. They're amazing. You can leave your rock there. Or if you like, this is a beautiful rock that I have kept from a baptism that was celebrated over under that tree. Melinda will recall it. And it, I've, I've kept it with me. It reminds me not only of the beauty of the sacrament of baptism and of this community, but of the way that God continually can be a source of comfort and wisdom and hope. Um, so once we disperse, you can put your rocks someplace or keep them. And now, beloved, may the love of God, may the peace of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with and keep each and every one of us this day and every day. And let God's people say, Amen. Amen. Ha, 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 ha.